May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each one of our hearts be always acceptable to our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. For centuries, scholars, theologians, and artists alike have tried in their own ways to make sense of Jesus' ascension. Noted theologian William Barclay once said of the artists, No one has ever succeeded in painting a picture of the ascension which was anything other than grotesque and ridiculous. Well, I'm not so sure about that. After seeing these works of art, you might agree with him or you might just find in them beauty, meaning, and perhaps a deeper appreciation for this important feast. Garofalo's The Ascension of Christ is probably the most famous depiction of the Ascension. Sit with it for just a moment and soak in the details. Now you can see Jesus is levitating above a group of people who are crowded below. The artist captures in them, I think, the confusion and fear that the disciples were feeling that day. Everyone is anxiously pointing in every direction as if they don't know which way to go, perhaps wondering, now what? I particularly find two people almost amusing. The person directly below Jesus, left foot wearing the blue tunic, pointing at the bearded man as if accusing him of something, maybe blaming him for Jesus's sudden disappearance. And then there's the person directly to their right, holding up both of his hands as if saying, it's not my fault. The focus, of course, is on Jesus rising above, pointing up, floating in the midst of parting clouds, and in them the subtle figures, the great cloud of witnesses that you see therein. Jesus ascends not just to the Father, but to join all those we love but see no longer. But my favorite depiction of the ascension is Salvador Dali's painting. One art reviewer wrote this about this masterpiece. It's inspired by the nucleus of an atom. The artist imagined Christ's ascent unifying heaven and earth. The sunflower-like corona of the atom overlaps the divine sphere of the Holy Spirit, symbolized by the dove with outstretched wings. Through Christ's body is recumbent, his hands rise tensely on either side, and they're mirrored by the portrait of Gala, the artist's wife and muse, and she hovers above the composition. Now she is often portrayed as the Holy Mother and here she mysteriously watches from the heavens, tears shed to perhaps convey the sadness of seeing her son departing the familiarity of the earthly world. But what is striking about it is that Dolly decided to paint it from the disciples' point of view as they were watching Jesus rise. Of course, that means that they're looking upward at Jesus' feet. In this painting, really the first thing you see, sometimes the only see you really see, unless you really start looking, are the bottom of Jesus' feet. It places all of us, all of the disciples, indeed all of creation, under Jesus' feet. Now notice how many depictions of the ascension remind us not of Jesus' face or arms or hands, but his feet. When Jesus is teaching his disciples, they are often said to sit at his feet. Those are the feet that carried him from town to town, healing the sick, welcoming the outcast, forgiving the sinner, preaching the good news to all people. Those are the feet that walked on the water and calmed the storm. Those are the feet that a sinful woman washed with her tears and dried with her hair out of love for him. Those are the feet that were nailed to the cross, the feet that the resurrected Jesus showed to Thomas, who then proclaimed, my Lord and my God. 
So when we speak of the ascension, we proclaim not only with Thomas that Jesus is our Lord and God, but also that those feet would eventually take their last step on earth, leaving the disciples, leaving us to carry on his life, his work, his love for others. See, the ascension is about the final reunion of earth and heaven, human and divine, matter and spirit. They are, again, one. And it's important that we see ordinary human feet going into heaven. But in the meantime, our feet are here. We are here. St. Teresa of Avila once wrote in a prayer, she said, Lord Christ, you have no body on earth but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours. Ours are the eyes through which your compassion must look out on the world. Ours are the feet by which you may still go about doing good. Ours are the hands with which you bless people now. And so bless our minds, bless our bodies, that we may be a blessing to others. Bless our feet. May they travel in the footsteps of our risen Lord. Amen.